Hello, everybody. How are you doing on this fine Tuesday? I'm doing quite well. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, today's video is going to be a little different than the ones that I have been making as of late. We have to talk about Britney Spears. Oh, my God. So y'all might have seen the documentary. I'm, I'm going to be calling it a documentary in this video. But yeah, I mean, hardly, hardly qualifies as that, considering all their sources are anonymous. All their sources are anonymous. Like, imagine if I came on here and I just told y'all anything and everything and said, sources say, instead of saying, I read it in a court document or showing y'all the court document or whatever. So yes, I am aware it's not really a documentary. It's just a hit piece. It's a hit piece. But it is starting to make me feel very concerned and stressed out for Brittany. Now, some of y'all know that I did just start a podcast with Jake and we do talk about Brittany on the podcast. And I'm mostly planning on keeping most of my Britney opinions and theories over there. I just think it's best to keep things separate just for algorithm purposes. But I just had to say something about this today because I watched that documentary last night and have not been able to stop thinking about it. It was so infuriating. It was basically like an hour long special about why conservatorships are great, why Britney needs one, why she's unhinged and crazy and it's no one else's fault but hers. It was just insane. So now this morning, if you just search, you know, Britney Spears on the internet, you'll see all kind of stuff. You'll see stuff about this documentary, but you'll also see stuff saying that Britney's marriage is on the rocks with Sam Asghari, also saying that there is a new musical coming out once upon a one more time. And, you know, my sirens just start going off immediately. It seems possible that the timing of this documentary is such that everybody's talking about Britney again, and now maybe they'll want to go see this bullshit musical. It just makes me mad. So I'm looking at this insider article that came out like an hour ago and it says, Britney Spears drinks coffee and energy drinks by the gallons so she can stay awake for days at a time and has quote, constant fear of being re-institutionalized according to a new TMZ documentary. And that is what I want to talk about today. They put this in headlines and they put it in the TMZ documentary as if Britney's fear of being institutionalized is somehow crazy or not well-founded or not justified. What do we know about people being institutionalized against their will? Well, there's no due process for one. Anybody can just call, say that you're crazy, and then the cops can come and just pick you up. That's not even just in California. That happens in Florida. You have the Florida shuffle that happens in Nevada. I've definitely known people it's happened to in Las Vegas. Um, it happens in Arizona. It happens in most states in the country where you can be forcibly institutionalized without going to trial, without a jury, without due process, without equal protection to speak of. And Britney's business manager and one of the masterminds behind the conservatorship, her name is Lou Taylor. Now, I have my personal experiences with Lou Taylor. She actually tried to leverage her position as a client of my law firm, which I was at the firm first, just for the record. I worked there first. Then she came and tried to hire the firm. Well, she tried to leverage her position as a client at the firm to have my bosses tell me to stop making videos about her on the internet, which I'm sure y'all can imagine how that went over for her. It didn't. Anyway, so this Lou Taylor lady is huge in Hollywood. She's a very, very powerful woman in Hollywood. Not only Hollywood, but also the music industry, pop music, country music. She's all across the genres, hip hop, R&B. She's all, oh, she's everywhere, rock and roll. And this woman has some tactics that have now been exposed. Now, Lindsay Lohan's dad, for example, came out, called Lou Taylor out several years ago and said that Lou Taylor was trying to lock Lindsay up against her will. So personally, I feel Sean and the people around Lindsay who are representing her are responsible. And I want to make one thing clear so you all know this. When Lindsay was supposed to go into Morningstar Rehab, they started to reconstruct everything there for Lindsay to accommodate her. Sean Chapman Holly, Sean and Lou Taylor leaked that to the press because they wanted Lindsay to get out sooner and have her in UCLA so she wouldn't spend much time in a rehab. They are destroying my daughter's life. In a hospital of Lou Taylor's choice, Courtney Love has come out and said that Lou Taylor tried to do a mutated strain of a conservatorship on her. So this is not brand new. And what do we know about Lindsay and Courtney? What do we know about Lindsay Lohan and Courtney Love? They do not live in the United States. 
because they are afraid of being locked up against their will. Why are they afraid of that? Because it's happened before. So here you have TMZ and then Insider and Yahoo News and everybody's repeating it, talking about Britney's in constant fear of being reinstitutionalized. So she needs to take her medicine. Hello? Hello? Wouldn't you be in constant fear of being taken in the night and institutionalized if it had happened to you? If you were in literally imprisoned by your family and tricked, forced to work, forced to make money for people, you were just taken in the middle of it, wouldn't you also be afraid that that could happen again? It already happened. So it's just so infuriating that they are twisting this open air prison concept into something that Britney Spears is crazy for thinking of. I think that it is intentional. I think that it is supposed to make us all think in the public, our collective consciousness, that it's actually stupid for Britney to fear that because it's not going to happen. It did happen. It didn't only happen to her once. It happened twice. Not only did it happen to her twice, it's happened to Kanye West. His trainer called and had him institutionalized. It happened to Amanda Bynes. Her family and manager lured her into an intervention where she was taken against her will. It happened to Misha Barton. It happened to Steve-O. It happened to Brittany. It happened to Bam. And Bam was put into that system for like two years in the Florida shuffle. This is what they do. They imprison and or enslave famous people. No one asks any questions because in our mind, having money equals sign freedom for some reason. I don't know why we think that, but people think if somebody has money, there's no way that anything bad can happen to them and they have enough money. So they're fine. Hello. They're not in charge of the money in these circumstances. We have to start waking up to this because guess what? It ain't just famous people that this is happening to. It's exorbitantly rich people who are not famous, which maybe y'all don't care about rich people. But just as soon as they run out of rich people to do it to, they're going to move on to you. They already do it to very, very poor people, disenfranchised people and vulnerable people, people who have mental health conditions, people who are homeless, people who have already been treated very poorly by society that no one will believe. They pluck them off the streets. They experiment on them. They do this type of things to veterans. They do it to a lot of people. Okay. So it isn't just famous people. I like to talk about the famous people because if it can be happening to someone as famous as Britney Spears, then it can really be happening to anyone. And I know a lot of y'all say in the comments, oh, I'm glad I'm not rich. It'll happen to anyone. You got an insurance policy? You better not mess up in Florida too bad because you'll be being shuffled and shuffled and you won't be able to get out. This is how it happens. I won't tell y'all this to scare you. I tell you this to make you aware because once we're all aware, we can start doing something about it. And by something about it, I mean petitioning our local governments, petitioning our federal governments. And I ain't talking about with a petition you sign. I'm talking about making actionable requests. I'm talking about protests. I'm talking about sit-ins. I'm talking about using our First Amendment rights to do something about this open air prison. It's not just conservatorships. It's Marchman Acts. It's Baker Acts. It's 5150s. It's every state has some version of it, pretty much. And it's not just conservatorships or guardianships, although those are particularly insidious because they are mutated from the laws of slavery. People get upset when I call conservatorships slavery. That's what it is. They took them slavery laws mutated them. You know where slavery cases used to be heard whenever it was like a legal thing in the United States? The probate court. Not in the same courts like the criminal courts and the civil courts. No, no. There were specific slavery courts called probate court. They didn't shut them down when slavery ended. They renamed it conservatorship. So you're basically assigning someone's rights to another person. You're allowing another person to essentially own the conservatee. The conservatee doesn't have the legal right to enter into a contract, to get married in some cases, some cases even to vote. Most cases, they don't have the legal right to travel, to drive a car, to leave this. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. And I know that for a lot of people, it's like, well, it's Britney Spears or it's Bam Margera and y'all don't care about them. What could happen to you? It could certainly happen to your grandma. It could happen to your cousin down the street. And then all of a sudden you're going to look around and everybody you know is going to be being held somewhere against their will. That is the that is the route we're going down.
We have to stop saying, well, it ain't happening to me, so I don't care about it. Some of the other stuff they said on this documentary, on this hit piece, that's what I'll call it. Some of the other stuff they said on this hit piece was Britney Spears drinks a lot of coffee and energy drinks. And she stays awake for days at a time and then she sleeps a lot. So, so what? So what? Y'all had to make a documentary about that? You didn't want to make a documentary about the fact that she had an IUD in her body that she wasn't allowed to take out? You don't want to talk about the fact that she didn't have control over her reproductive choices. You don't want to talk about the fact that she couldn't get married. You don't want to talk about the fact that she couldn't decide what medications went into her body and what time she took them. You don't want to talk about the fact that she was not in control of her career. You don't want to talk about the fact that she literally said she was sex trafficked. No, she drinks coffee and drives around. That's what they decided to talk about. And then another thing. Mark Vincent Kaplan, who is the ex-husband's lawyer, he said, well, you know, of course, Brittany has the right to say what she wants to say, but except she's got kids. And so she needs to be thinking about what her kids are going to think. Listen, just to be completely fair, I really don't want my mother on Instagram showing off her whole naked body and stuff to 42 million people. I don't. So in that regard, I could definitely see where the children are coming from. Maybe they are embarrassed. That's that's their prerogative. They're allowed to be embarrassed. But there is no except when you're a parent provision in the First Amendment. It doesn't say anything about except when you're a parent. You got free speech except if you're a mom. You could protest except when you're a mom. You could say what you want to say except when you're a mom. That, that this is what it says. That's not what it says. That's one thing that really particularly made me mad was that they kind of like know that there's certain things they have to say and then they completely dismantle them, right? They know that people are going to say, well, isn't Brittany allowed to say what she wants to say on the internet, especially after everything she's been through? He has to say, yeah, she's allowed to say what she wants, but what about her kids? She's not, she's not allowed to say what she wants because she has kids. It's like, well, that, no, what do you mean? If he would have phrased it like, of course she has free speech. Of course she can say whatever she wants. But I wish she would consider alternative perspectives before she posts. Like maybe how her kids are going to think about it. Even that I think would be a little bit like, who the f*** are you? The family lawyer who's made probably literally multiple millions of dollars off these people at this point. Straight from Britney's pocket. Straight from Britney's hard work that goes to Kevin Federline, $40,000 a month or however much it is now. And then he pays his lawyer with it. You see what I mean? Like all these people are directly financially benefiting from Britney Spears. And I ain't talking about just from reporting. I'm talking about like legal services. I'm talking about stuff like that where it's like, I mean, TMZ, I think really made their entire existence off of Britney Spears. They opened up in 2005 and by 2008, it was like the Britney Spears. They should call it TMZ should be called TBS, the Brit TBSN or something, the Britney Spears Network. Also, Dr. Drew made an appearance and I think Dr. Drew, no, it was Dr. Phil, had something to do with Britney's um, conservatorship on the at the very beginning, like in 2007. But Dr. Drew, honestly, look, this, this, I don't know, but if I was Britney, I might consider suing him for defamation after what he said last night. I mean, he was so horrible. And talking about Britney is ill. She has brain damage. He's talking about all this stuff. Like, let's say that even is true. He only could have learned that in a confidential way. And I feel like if you're a doctor or any type of medical professional or anyone who's trying to act like you are a medical professional and you have someone's confidential private medical information, maybe talking about it on TMZ isn't the way. I don't know. I, maybe it's a HIPAA violation. Maybe it isn't, but it seems unethical to me. <sighs> anyway, so all this to say, me and Jake actually did record a whole episode on our new podcast about this matter. And I don't want to get too much into the details of what I really think because I already did it over there. It would be like very redundant, but I did want to come on here and announce, yes, we do have an episode coming out about that. We already recorded it. He was in that chair back there. It's recorded. I don't know when it's going to come out. Maybe this week we're, we're shooting for Thursday, but we really don't know because we have a lot of other stuff going on. If you haven't heard the first episode, it did just air yesterday. So I will leave a link below to that channel. There's only one video on the channel right now. And some of y'all were telling me apparently it is hard to find it. So I'll link it below. It's also now linked on my other channels or whatever down below. A lot of y'all are saying like, why do you have so many YouTube channels now? And I think that's a 
fair question. Um, they all are kind of for different things. And I have slightly different audiences now on my different channels. So my different channels are not necessarily for you to have to go and watch all of them. If you miss a video, that's fine. It's like, you know, one of them, for example, is this channel where it's just kind of commentary, reactions, talking, streaming style videos, stream of consciousness type of thing. Then we have BJ Investigates, which isn't only my channel, right? We work together as a team on BJ Investigates. So other people are kind of working on the editing and stuff like that. So that's that channel. It's also a very different style of video. I'm in front of a green screen for the most part. And there's, you know, all kinds of things going on. It's not this sort of stream of consciousness style thing. It's a little bit more regimented, a little bit. Then we have Study Break, which is a different type of channel. But the person who I work with on Study Break is Shelby. So it's a collaboration channel with Shelby. BJ Investigates is a collaboration channel with Jake. This channel is just my channel. And then the bedtime ASMR channel is also just my channel. And that's just because like, I feel like when someone comes to your channel, you're kind of like sort of inviting them into your house in a way, like you're kind of inviting them into your room or whatever. And it's like, I want there to be a certain vibe in each channel. Whereas this channel right here is a little bit unhinged. You come here for a certain reason, right? You come here for a certain vibe. That's not the vibe of a blacked out screen reading the Federalist Papers in a quiet voice. So that's why I put that channel up. And eventually I'm going to start reading some books too. So it'll kind of be like an audio book channel. And I think that's all the channels I have. So I have this one. I have BJ Investigates, which is a collaboration channel with Jake. And then we have our podcast, which is also a collaboration channel, but it doesn't have a lot of editing and stuff. It's really for podcast platforms like Apple, Spotify, whatever. So those are two. So I have this one. I have BJ Investigates. I have the podcast, which is with the same team as BJ Investigates. And then I have Study Break with Shelby, who's a different person. So that's a different type of videos. And then I just have that reading channel, which that's kind of like just a silly, like some people requested it. So I made it. It's not like a big deal over there. So if you were wondering why I have all these channels, that's the reason why some of them are in collaboration with other people. Some of them just have a different vibe. And I don't think that they that the videos would really get the appreciation that they deserve or really would have the right vibe for this channel. So I just kind of spun it off. Anyway, that's all I really had for today. We are working on a lot of stuff. The BAM part three interview for that surprise podcast is almost done. It should be done today or maybe tomorrow. It'll be out this week for sure. I mean, barring unforeseen circumstances, it'll be out this week. It's almost done. On that surprise witness, most of the videos that you see on here are edited by me. It'll be like one or two one-offs every several months that maybe I'll get some help with editing. But these videos over here, I edit. The ones on BJ Investigates, I don't edit at all. I don't even touch. I make a bullet point list. I sit down, I record whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth and then someone else edits it. So um, that is what's going on right now. Someone else is editing the BAM podcast. I do not edit over there. I edit over here. I edit the ASMR channel, but I do not edit the BJ Investigates videos. That's a different thing. That's why it's a collaboration. So anyway, that being said, the podcast is almost done being edited. So part three will be out this week, barring unforeseen circumstances. That is the plan. If it's done today, it'll come out today. If it's done tomorrow, come out tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. <sighs> um, yeah. So like I said, I do plan on keeping most of my Britney Spears commentary to that podcast for the reasons I just outlined. I will be getting back into the sort of auditing and cop watching and investigation videos as well. That is really my plan. That is really my goal. For example, the NYPD charges against Sean, they've been dropped by the district attorney. There's a bunch of updates on that. If you are interested in the updates on Long Island Audit and the NYPD story, then you should head over to his channel because he does have some updates. So unfortunately, I'm pretty much maxed out with the amount of work that I could be doing on any given day. I've kind of reached the capacity. So maybe I will be able to figure out some way to make my work like more efficient so I can get more stuff out. But I really I'm going as fast as I can without reaching like burnout levels and I'm doing the best I can. That's all I really have for today. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, Mina. Okay, bye.